But let's just give him a warm round of applause. Deontay, yeah, the bronze bomber is in the Love building. It. Wilder is here, man. Yes, and I am super thankful that he fit me in his busy schedule. He's a businessman as well as a fighter, as well as a father. So his plate is full, you already know. Mm. And so I'm on it that he took the time out to come sit down with me. I appreciate you, man. Bless us in time. Yes, Peace indeed. Time. So normally my show, I kind of just let it flow. Like we in my man cave, we just conversating. But I want to switch it up a little bit different today, man, because you here, man. So we're going to do 12 rounds with Edie. Okay. And I'm going to try to get you to tap out, man, early. I'm going to try to get me one of them first-round knockouts right. you be getting. <laughs> if you make it all the way to 12 rounds, which I feel like he is because he a champion, then, 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 then you win and I lose. But if I get him to tap out, I'm champion. <laughs> so let's get into it, man. 12 rounds with Edie. Me and Deontay Wilder, we going to head up. And uh, first question, you started boxing late. Correct. Um, most boxers start very early in their life. Why did Deontay start so late? I started late. Uh, I started running by twenty, right? Twenty. I started twenty, and then um, um, I started because of my daughter. She was born with spina bifida, and um, mm. you know, I'm originally from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So, you know, as a child, we what we grew up seeing is is football. You know, it's big in football, Alabama right. football, basketball. But football was the biggest. And, <laughs> you know, as a child, you want to be as you, what you see. You know, you've seen so many different people come to just celebrate, you know, to join hand-in-hand hand when the team is playing. You see all the, the, the spirit that comes there. Just the energy. You, want, you, you like, as a child, you see up on that, you're like, I want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to be a part of that glory and people come and praise. And so, you know, being up in a small city – you know, working so hard to get to those goals and accomplish it, accomplish that. That's what I was seeking to do, and um, until uh, um, college time came about, and I had a you know my girlfriend at the time told me, you know, we was about to 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 have a baby. So from that point on, my life just turned upside down. It wasn't for the point of me not knowing what I was gonna do or. Or uh, what? What was you know? What I'm gonna do or whatever? Because I come from a big family. Uh, I always had to take took. I always had to take care of my sisters, brothers, I know. and my loved ones. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I always had to be the protector, the provider. You know. So me having a child of my own, it wasn't like a a a, a, a place where I didn't know what to do. It was a scary feeling for me because I'm I'm only 19. Yeah, yeah. I got goals, I got dreams that I want to become and I want to do and having another human being being able to have responsibilities basically. Yeah. You feel like you don't have that to, like oh god, you know what I mean? But you did the act right. to create mm-hmm. this this beautiful human being, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was just that point and then at that time I uh had to drop out of college at that time and because I had to get a job. My daughter, was, she was uh, wasn't uh, she wasn't born like a normal child. She was born with spina bifida. Mm-hmm. Spina bifida is a disorder where kids are born with holes in the in their um, the spines, and most of the time they have to have surgeries or put shots in their head so the fluid won't build up in their in their head. It can go back down in their stomachs. Doctor said she would never be able to walk or never have a natural childhood ability or learning. But I always tell people if you if, if I, uh, that I have a man that make the impossible possible, mm. that you know, the doctor can say one thing, but he has it going a whole another way for you. Right. And for mines, that was the case. You know, she's running, she's walking, she's one of the smallest wow. little girls in, in her class. Well, she's eighteen now, so she ain't living oh, no more. But you know, they always be your that. baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you know, I look at her and. It just amazes me to see where she came from in this time. I have to really see the numbers because you can say when she was coming, you went 14, she 15, you can hear the number. But when you actually see it, mm-hmm. it's something about sin. Like, damn, she's growing. You know, she becomes so intelligent, so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And that's what just really changed my life. I, I, I had a friend in college. We was always talk about what we want to do and what are the things we was trying to do to get there because it's easy to say, I want to do this and I want to do that. Yeah. But what are you doing? 
to to apply make it happen. and to make it happen. Right. What 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 greatness you apply? And I always say we all have greatness in us, but greatness is only determined by service. True story. So what service you apply every day? You wait. You want to accomplish so much. Mm-hmm. You want to have so much. But what are you doing as yourself to apply to get to that to achieve that? Most of the time nowadays, people want things to be given to them. Mm-hmm. Hand it to them. They want it easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if it be like that, then you don't appreciate it. Yeah, if it lose it, it if you it don't come too like, easy. Ah. It ain't worth it. Yeah. You know? But when you grind and go through all the hard work, like that rose in the concrete mm-hmm. coming up out of that, yeah. when you grab something, you hold on to a tight press. Right. And you appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So with that being said, my daughter was all the motivation that I need. I, I had to quit college. I had to get a job. But then uh, I had a guy one of my guy to box because he was tall as well. He was trying to recruit him mm. out of the city. Now, I never knew a boxing gym was in the city at all. You know what I mean? We was just focused on basketball, football and stuff. You don't hear about stuff like that. And um, he called me immediately. He was like, I got this guy. He trying to get me to box. But he like, man, you know, I, don't, you know, I ain't no fighter. i like, I'm a lover and a fighter. So, shit, you know, let me get his number. Mm. And boom, boom. So, we end up getting the number. Dude called me. I met up at this gym. Now, you got to keep in mind, like, I've been there all my life. i never seen a boxing gym in my city. Like, I don't like, what's your Was you a this? boxing fan? Did you watch I was a boxing fan. Okay. You know what I mean? I was, you know, growing up with the uh, Evander Holyfields, yeah. Muhammad, you know, with Muhammad like before time. That's my guy, you know, during the Olympics time with them, Mike Tyson, yeah. you know, all those guys, and Roy Jones, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but just being in the atmosphere that I was in, it was less of that scene and more of, Football, right. basketball right. scene. So we gravitated with that more than that, although we see it on TV. Mm. But when I came into the gym, it just became like, it, it was just like a place that I'd never been before. It's almost like being to a, another country. You only hear about it or whatever, or you see. I never heard about the gyms. I only seen what's on TV, the big time, mm-hmm. you know, show and stuff like that. Never hear about gym stuff. So when I'm going into the gym, it's like, I'm in a new country, mm-hmm. but I'm in the same. I'm in my hometown, you know, city. Right. But I'm in a new country and, and, and run the surroundings of me because I never seen this before. Been right here, and you ever been in a place where you knew you was at the right place at the right time? Yeah. Every time <laughs> I walk into a studio, you know, what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So yeah. it, was like, it was like that, and I heard those heavily bills. Oh. <laughs> I felt like I was at the right place at the right time, bro. 